Hello and welcome to another episode on the Justice in Heels channel. Today I am joined by my friend Casey Fenter. Casey, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm well. So today Casey and I are going to discuss a very interesting topic, which is law during the holidays. So Casey, before we start, perhaps just tell our listeners and our watchers a bit more about yourself. Okay, so my name is Casey Fenter. Um, I am a paralegal um, and I am the director of CJ Fenter Consultants. And Danielle and I uh, only recently just met face to face, <laughs> but it has been a wonderful journey so far. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. I'm so excited for our conversation today. Yes, yes. No, it's it's a it's a conversation that's that's need to um be had for a long time. I don't think a lot of people are aware of their rights when they travel during the festive season and they end up in trouble for things that they could have avoided. One hundred percent. So, okay, so let's, we are going to be tackling like quite a few topics today, but let's start with when you are traveling this festive season, as Casey has said. So, Casey, let's start with yes. what do you do when a police officer tries to stop you? You know, Danielle, I always believe honesty is the best policy. Pull over, let the man do his job. Um, however, um, you, you should know your rights in that regard as well. You should know that you do not have to hand your ID card directly to the policeman. You can hold it up against your window uh, for them to have a look. Um, another thing is something we see quite often is um, police trying to search vehicles um, without proper cause or warrant to do so. Um, so if you get pulled over and a policeman says to you, sir, um, I need to search your vehicle, you have the right to ask him, sir, respectfully. Remember, respect is very important. Respect bo works both ways. Sir, do you suspect me of having committed a crime? And if he says no, then you say, then why would you like to search my car? So you need to know your rights to privacy. That is, that is what I'm trying to get to. Um, and like I said, honesty is the best policy. And if you feel that your rights are being tampered with, you need to phone an attorney. And something I've learned along this road that I've walked is that you need to be very honest with your attorney. If you were saying no to the search because you had stuff that you weren't supposed to have in your vehicle, then unfortunately it is what it is. However, if you feel that you're being unfairly targeted, it is of utmost importance that you say to that policeman that you may not search my vehicle without proper cause or a warrant to do so. And if he detained you on site, you can institute action for unlawful detainment. Amazing. So I think it's also just very important to mention that should this person um, try to arrest you, you should not try to go against it or fight or anything yes. like that. Like rather just stay calm and yes. go, with the, go with the police officer. I mean, you can still call your attorney you can then later take steps if you feel that this person acted unlawfully or they didn't have cause to actually arrest you. So that's also Definitely. something that's very important. Because, I mean, if you are going to use force, um, the police officer is also going to use force to try and arrest you. And, I mean, yes. we don't want that. Yes, no, definitely. Um Society must still remember that the police are there to enforce the law. And one thing I definitely see um, about South Africans is we are mad when police don't fulfill their duties, but then we are also mad when police fulfill their duties. You know, we must understand that there are a few rotten apples, but it's not the majority of the police force. They are genuinely still good men and women that serve on our police force. 
definitely and also i mean th that's true of any any profession for that matter i mean like I'm, i i assume you also you've also heard the stories that like all attorneys are bad and all of them only care about money and um all of them lie and like all of these wild statements but again it's a few bad apples you can't say it's everyone yeah that's that's the thing generalization is a huge problem that that needs to be dealt with um each person is unique you know as much as we want to believe that our personal beliefs that for example i am unique you are unique everyone is unique we have to remember that about other people as well everyone is an is a unique person yeah okay so let's move on so let's say now for example the police officer tells you, listen, um, okay, have you been drinking? And he, I mean, again, be be honest. Like you said, honesty is the best policy. So yes. tell them if you've had something to drink, they may ask you to take a breathalyzer test. Mm -hmm. And yes. yeah, perhaps you can just tell us a bit more about the legalities. Like, can you actually say no, but I don't want one? What happens when they have to take your blood? So like like we just said honesty is the best policy genuinely you know the truth will always come out and it's always going to be worse after you've lied to the police um if they want to breathalyze you um you have a right to see that the mouthpiece is fit a brand new one is fitted onto the machine if not you can refuse a um breathalyzer test in general, yes, you can refuse a breathalyzer test, but then you have to go for a blood test with the policeman. Which that is what say no to. Yeah. Yes, that's a look. Con it's a consequence of your actions. Um, I know we all have our own beliefs on how much is too much to actually drive. However, there are still laws that govern the country, and we have to abide by that. And, you know, as much as we advise our clients to, you know, please don't drink and drive, please don't drink and drive, there are still going to be people that drink and drive. And we hear about those terrible accidents um, almost every day. Um, so I'm I'm all for facing uh, the consequences of your actions, but there is a right way to go about doing it. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, guys, if if you had something to drink, perhaps consider not driving. Um, if you know that you're going to be on the road, perhaps consider again not drinking. Um, or just like uh limiting yourself. Okay, then. So let's say you are at the police station now. I think it's also very important to mention that you have a right to actually call your attorney. You have a right to call your personal care physician or your house doctor for that matter to do that test um but it should not be more than two hours so it must not delay the whole process for more than two hours um you agree with me i'm correct there yes so okay. um thing for that is actually because um remember the longer that alcohol is in your system the less of it is in your system. Your body works it out quite quickly, but that is, of course, dependent on your your weight and your height and your fitness levels and stuff like that. So it's very important to know that just because your friend can drink four beers and still drive afterwards doesn't mean you can. You know? Um, yes. Know, know your limits again I also just want to mention something very interesting that I read sorry I'm looking down I'm looking down with my phone no. because I want to get that statistics um so this morning I actually read something very interesting so um this article and I'll also share it in the the description of the YouTube video says for interest sake and to know when you would be over the limit let's break down the alcohol units per drink type so only one 75 milliliter glass of wine is one lim one unit, okay? Yeah. So one 250 milliliter glass of wine is 3.3 3 units. So one shooter is a half unit in most instances. And then one beer is 1.5 units. So what is the legal source of the uh, uh, breath 
alcohol limit at the moment, it is less than 0 0.24 milligrams in 1000 milliliters on the breath and less than 0 0.05 grams per 100 milliliter in the blood. So that's a lot of like very technical stuff, but basically it got, comes down to two drinks in the space of one hour. So yes. that's also like a good way to distinguish if you went over the limit. You know, in 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 my opinion, and it, it is just my opinion, like I said, for everyone, it's different. You know, your weight plays a huge role. Your fitness level plays a huge role. And like you said, even like it's two drinks in the space of an hour. For me, that is, I can't drink that much. And um, that would definitely put me over the limit. And what I think what's important to note actually, um, especially um with this R2 Act that's uh coming into play, is um the zero uh tolerance to alcohol in your blood. I actually think yes, it's in Gauteng, it's it's already active. You you can't have any mm -hmm. blood um alcohol content, yeah. So Which is actually you know, better in my opinion. Yes, I mean no, like I, it's I, a slip, but at least like I think just imagine like if we don't drink and drive, how many accidents can actually be prohibited from happening? No. Like how many lives would be saved? And you know, the thing is, it's worse because people are traveling to places where they don't stay. So they don't know yeah. the roads that well to drive like that, you know? And it's it's just, it's a dang dangerous cocktail of events. It's December, it's leave time, it's Christmas time. People are thinking, oh, I can have now two or three beers at the bar and drive 900 meters to where I'm staying. But the problem with that is as well is like most of accidents happen close to the person's residence. Yep, that's very true. And that's a very good point. I actually haven't considered that. Like you don't know the road. So like you're not mm -hmm. as, um, let's say like, the chances of you getting into an accident on a road that you drive every day may be less than you getting into an accident when you are in a place that you don't really know, that you don't drive. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, so the, that's the, a very good the, point. The problem is people's patience as well. I see it. Um, so we drove down to KZN from Gauteng um, and we drove the N3. And the way that people were driving, it, it actually scared me. And then I realized, but, you know, he, wa he wasn't actually going that fast. It's just because we don't know the roads there. I mean, mm. I mean, the same would count if he does the N14, N1 route. You know, he would not understand those roads. And then you'll get people like us who are driving the actual speed limit up a hill and leaning to the left, you know? <laughs> that type of situation but people do take chances and you know yeah. whether it be speed that's why I believe so much in that um what is I don't know what it is but arrive alive oh you see yes, that campaign yes yes that is amazing and you know you know there's no reason to be in a rush you know it's still you you, it's still going to take you 20 kilometers to get there or there or there, no matter what speed you are driving. And that doesn't mean I'm pro driving slow because that also causes accidents. Yeah. Um, but drive, drive reasonably responsible. You know, and yes. that's something I learned actually from riding motorbike. I used to ride on-road motorbike. And my dad always said to me, you know, Yes, I trust you. You know how to ride this bike and use the road properly. But you constantly have to look people. around for the around you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so let's move on. So, let's say, for example, somebody stops you now, but you are, let's say it's the middle of the night, you do not feel safe, like something feels mm -hmm. off. Um. So, yeah, can you just, explain to us what what somebody can do in that instance like can they drive to the nearest police station is that allowed 
So actually, there is no precedent um, on that. Um, I know Carte Blanche did something about it a couple of years ago because like on the N14 and the N1, we struggle with the, with the um, blue light patrol Believe. brigade. Yeah. Believe, uh, those people who impersonate police officers. And, you know, I'm going to give it the legal answer. It depends. <laughs> You know, it it really it depends. Um, there's no blanket answer. Um, but if you are a woman or an elderly lady or an elderly person, um, even men, you know, because the gun knows no age. Yes. You know, or gender. So I would say, you know, put your hazards on drive slowly and you don't even have to drive to the nearest police station if there is a um petrol station garage. closed yeah garage, a well-lit place that's busy remember you need to go somewhere that's busy and well lit um and cameras um but on your way there dial um what is the police number 10 triple one yes yeah Dial 10 triple one, tell them, listen, I ha I have a cop behind me. I don't know if it's a police. They've got blue lights on. They've got this number plate. We're on this road. Is it um proper police? You know, if you can show that you have bona fide done your part to make sure that you are safe, I, I can't see any fault in that. But 100% yes. But circumstances it depends if you are speeding on the highway and a cop car pulls off behind you you know yes you you also have the right to make sure that is a proper police vehicle but don't don't be oblivious to the law that still stands in this country we know i know it's very little and it's very far spread but like i said there's still people who want to do their jobs um respect that person again it comes down to respect great okay so then the last question on this one topic before we move on to um like dealing with the law when you are actually with your family which is going yes. to be interesting so a lot of people don't know this but you are allowed to actually film a police officer um, or like one of like when somebody stops you, you are allowed to do that. But I also want to say again, like Casey said, be respectful. Don't like push the phone into their faces or be rude or call them names because a lot of people do that. Um, just be kind, just be courteous. If you feel like you have the need to film this encounter, you're allowed to do that. You are more than welcome to do that. That is very important. Um, and you know, I'm in one aspect i am very glad that people have access to phones that can record stuff but at the same time it's i've seen some pretty embarrassing videos of people <laughs> um you know doing stupid things and i was like oh my gosh thank goodness no one has ever filmed me while i have been at a bar or a club you know <laughs> type yeah. of situation yeah. Um, but you're yeah, recorded. It's you know, yeah. I mean, there's there's even at schools when incidents happen at schools, and you record a fight, for example, and some of the schools actually make the kids um delete, delete the content. For, yeah, fight. and I mean that happened personally last year um to someone in my family and you know if these teachers realize that they are deleting um evidence they're tampering in essence they're tampering with evidence it's an arrestable offense it is you know yeah so that i believe still needs to be very well regulated um not to the point to stop people of recording stuff, but the the storage of such content. I believe that's that's very underregulated in our country right now. I agree with you there. Okay, so do you have anything else that you perhaps want to add that might be of value to our listeners? 
you know, just taking on from this point of um, video recordings, if I may, if I may. Yes, of course. Um, it's very, very, very important to know the line between child pornography and um, pictures of your of your children. Um, very important. You know, I feel like very important. And, you know, it's such an important distinction to know because, I mean, I see a lot of parents still posting pictures of their kids at the beaches, um, in their bikinis, like little or kids. Naked, and don't get even. Naked even, you know, if people just understood the dangers of the internet, that picture of your child naked on the beach could be saved and shared to a um a porn ring, you know. That stuff is very real. I think people really underestimate the power of the internet in that regard. Um, or you know, it doesn't just happen in America. I think that that's something to very much understand is that child pornography in South Africa is still very real and child pedophilia. Mm, it's still very real. It's still very gross. Um, and parents, just please, you know, I don't know how many times people can say, please watch what you post about your kids on the internet. It's very true. It is so true. And I mean, it could be people you know even. I mean, it's it's very scary and I, I just wish more people understood that and I'm not talking about cut your kid off of Instagram or Facebook or whatever but just be clothed you know not and I don't mean clothed by um a bikini I mean even if it's a bikini top put some swimming shorts on you know just yeah. something and I mean I understand that I was that teenager that was like yeah bikini be um pictures on the beach you know but it is, it's very important to just rather be safe than sorry than have your own pictures with your own face manipulated in such a way that they look real. I mean, look at what AI tech is doing. Yeah, we live in a scary time. And I actually want to add something. Scary. I want to actually add something to that that I've actually seen. And it's, like, I'm very glad that you mentioned this because it, it fits so nicely into what we are discussing next which mm. is like you know the law when dealing with your family and spending time with your family yes. I do yes. get so I know a lot of the listeners know that I volunteer for two non-profit organizations that focus on women rights specifically domestic violence specifically yes and so many it feels bad to say this but many people like they totally just like throw the baby out with the bath water uh, rhetorically speaking so yes. what they do is they will say it's fine if I post a picture of my child on like my profile picture of, or I have a picture of me and my child and like my new husband but it's not fine if the child's father takes pictures of the child and puts that on Facebook like if it's on Facebook whether it's on Facebook or on WhatsApp it's the same thing um, I just feel like we should also be vigilant to not have double standards. So it's just not just yeah. the mom who's allowed to have the child on social media and to show off the child. It's the father's right as well. And like, it, it counts for I both, basically. Agree. I completely agree with that. You know, I have had a few friends have babies um, over the past few years and I will say at first when I started hearing people are not posting their pick their babies on social media and whatever, I thought it was the most draconic old way thinking ever. But the older I've gotten and the more I've, you know, seen this AI develop and um the internet, the internet has become a very dark place. Um, you know, I I agree. You know, yes, okay, I will post, and um, I'm not married yet, but <laughs> my future babies, you know, they deserve to be respected on the internet. I don't care if people know their faces, but they will always have clothes on. You know, I will not post pictures of my child in the bath type of situation, you know, because I, I don't want to create like manipulable manipulate yeah that word <laughs> um pictures you know I would 
you know, it's fine to post your kid on the internet. Yes, to the mother and the father. And, you know, if if you have that relationship with your in-laws or your parents, I do, um, let them post pictures because it's also their grandchild, you know. Oh, okay. But if, I don't want my school friends when we go out um, to take pictures with my child and post it. You know, I still want to see who until I feel they are at an age to make that decision for, them for themselves yeah yeah totally agree with you there and I think the thing is just like this is, it's not a legal issue really like just use yeah. common sense so if you feel like you don't want your ex or whoever to post pictures of your child just deal with it just have a conversation with them and explain to them why you want to put in that boundary why you don't want them to post the picture like it like I, I kid you not there's so many people who say yeah but I want to sue them because they now put a picture of my child on the internet and I'm like this is not like like why don't you just speak to the person and ask them to please not do this in the future um yes. <laughs> it's just easier and then also that is so to add to add to what you actually said about like not posting pictures of your child in the bathtub like I totally agree with that I mean I don't know yeah. if you've read that story about the Nirvana the child that was the baby that was on the Nirvana album cover many years ago then he grew up and he actually like sued his parents because they yeah. like put him there naked for everybody to see everything yeah I, I remember that, that. I, don't know, I don't know how it ended but I remember mm -hmm. that very distinctly I no, mean, that was recently, that... that was actually within the last, I would say, five years. Five years. Yes. 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 So, I mean, it's scary, like, these things happen. I mean, your child can grow up and now, like, there's pictures of them, like, naked in the bathtub. I mean, and they don't want that. Mm. No, I look, I do understand that. I'm talking now specifically for the um, Nirvana cover. You must also take into context what type of band that is. You know, that is what they're into. And, you know, I although I understand, yes, okay, the picture was a bit graphic of a child. But, I mean, no one really put two and two together to say where's that child that's that on the child, cover there. Yeah. yeah. You know, as much as I understand it, you must also think logically. I mean... You know, a, a big principle that our courts are pushing at the moment is the reasonable person, you know. And a reasonable person is not a conservative person. Yes. You, you understand. Um, but I, even though I do completely agree 100% where he came from, like, yes, if that was me, I would also be upset. But, I mean, the amount of people who are going who are going to say okay it was that child we know we've been watching him grow up since that picture was taken you know it's not that type of issue yes okay yeah. great. so then let's look at other things you should take into account um when you know spending time with your family over the holidays so the first one that i wanted to mention was actually following court orders that are in place um, because I know a lot of people this time of year, they like, let's say, for example, there's a maintenance order in place. So your maintenance yes. order says you must pay 5,000 rand a month for your children. Now, usually you only see your children, let's say, uh, every weekend. So you see them over the weekends, but not during the week. And yeah, now the child spends another week with you extra on top of that weekend. A lot of people then go and they say, okay, but since the child is spending more time with me, I'm not going to pay 5K, I'm only going to pay 3K. You're not allowed to do that. You need to follow the court order. You can't unilaterally you know, decide to not pay or to pay less. You are going to get into trouble if you do that. Yes, do Hundred um, percent. There was actually a case that came out like that. I just want to get the name quickly. Um, it is called E N M 
uh, versus LTM and then M and Associates. Um, it's a high court judgment uh, from the Northwest Division in Muffle King. Um, there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to um, the validity of court orders. And people have thought, oh, but it's not valid. Um, we are busy appealing it, wada, wada, wada. You know, that court order is still in order until it is formally set aside. It doesn't matter what your attorney thinks. It doesn't matter what you think. It's what the law says. A court order is valid until it is formally set aside. What I'm saying. People people are getting caught um in this. And you know, like like you and I have been discussing, 2023 has been a robust year for case law. There has been some brilliant case law that's come out this year. And you know, contempt of court, you know, especially since um Jacob Zuma's contempt of court um ruling. You know, the courts are taking contempt of court very seriously, very seriously, whether it be in family matters, whether it be in commercial matters, the, court, the courts are not playing around. You need to abide by a court, court order. And until it is set aside, that is what you do, because you, you stand the risk of then becoming um, in contempt of court. You stand the chance of paying a fine or being in prison. And who wants to spend time in prison now over the festive oh, time? Exactly. Like Nobody. And to try and to try and get an attorney out to try and bail you out. It's it's just it's not a good mixture. Really, it's not a good mixture. And you know, I see what a lot of people do is and unfortunately, you know, I've seen it very, very often in family law case threes or 56s in mad court, you know, or 58, I can't remember exactly. But people are ugly when it comes to their kids. You know, that kid needs both, both the parents. And to fight between yourselves of who gets to see them more often or who gets visitation or who gets this, who gets that, it's so unnecessary. And, you know, we, we need to reflect on the Constitution in that regard. If we look at um, Section 28.1 of the Constitution in the Bill of Rights, it's that um, in all matters concerning the child, the child's best interest of paramount importance. Paramount importance. It's enshrined in the Constitution and in the Children's Act. I think it's Section 9 of the Children's Act. But people forget to do things in the best in interest of their kids. You know, like you said with the maintenance, are they with me with me now for a week? I'm I'm gonna cut now the maintenance down. You can't do that. Just because they're with you for a week doesn't mean that their medical aid is also shortened for that week or, you know, they're, it's, it is what it is. And to fight about that when you, when all you want to do is actually see your kids, it's, it's disheartening. And I can understand why family prefer, sorry. It's selfish. It's totally selfish. You like, literally you are actually doing a disservice to your child. Exactly. And I wish more people understood that. And, you know, I'm actually, I'm so glad that's why uh, mediation is becoming a bigger deal. Because, you know, a divorce, unless, unless it's about critical stuff, and there's child abuse and stuff like that, there's no need to litigate. There's absolutely no need to litigate. You know, for, for the best interest of the child, sit around a table make a decision and that's why you know I'm I'm going to tell you this um with my current partner I said if we get married we are drafting our settlement agreement the same the same time we draft our antenuptial agreement you know because if we love each other to marry each other then we love each other to not screw each other over in the end that's a very, very glad, very, very um interesting way of looking at it. And I think it's very clever. Because just like imagine if you actually plan your divorce 
while you're still on a good foot. Like, that's brilliant. I mean, like, you might never need to use that settlement agreement, but God forbid you need it, then you have it. And, and you know, it doesn't need to include... as well. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't need to include specific assets or stuff like that. That's why the antinuptial agreement is there. That's to protect our assets. This is if we have children, what are we going to do? If, you know, because assets change over the years and we can, you know, edit and change and whatever over the years, but you got to love each other enough to look after each other when you don't work out. Because oh, that's, that's what a marriage, or that's, that's what a marriage should be rather, that, you know, you you both working towards attaining a future together you know you yes I've got my future and your partner will have his future or her future or you know but there's also a future for both of you and it's very important that that future whether it involves kids or assets and stuff like that it is so important to work on that path together and support each other where you need yeah, that's actually beautiful, like uh, a very nice insight. So, okay, so then on the other hand, we have people or a lot of people that I'm seeing, especially on Facebook, that are saying, oh, but like, what can I do to make my ex-husband or ex-wife or baby mama or baby daddy not see the children because like I'm angry at them. I don't want them to see them. They're not paying enough maintenance, blah, 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 blah. Like also don't do that again because firstly in law maintenance and contacting care and care are two separate things so even if somebody is not paying maintenance they are still like legally they can still see their children I know like it sounds unfair but I mean there are still uh, things that you can do to get maintenance you can go to maintenance court you don't need an attorney you can ask for maintenance but by keeping those children away from the mother or the father who wants to have a relationship with them is not the answer. It's going to do much no, more harm than it's, than it's worth. I agree with you 100%. You know, the kids, you know, I've seen some really broken kids from broken families. And I'm not, not every divorced family is a broken family. You know, but I'm talking about the ones where the mom and dad fought so much and the kids were involved and were unnecessarily involved, you know. And you've got to protect your kids, you know, as much as you two, and you two can hate each other. You and your partner can absolutely hate each other. But for the sake of your children, be an adult, slap a smile on your face, when the children's backs are turned and you're saying goodbye to your ex, you can zap them. It's fine. But the kids saw you give their dad the handshake hello, the handshake bye-bye, even if it's a hug, you know, or have a good day. You know, don't don't create that volatile situation for your kids. That's that's true. And I also read something that very interesting um, that said that when you hate your child or you show your child that you don't like their par other, the other parent very much or you keep on criticizing them in front of the children, that child actually starts to hate themselves or to like question like, because I mean, it's your father or it's, or it's your mother. So obviously you also have that thing that the other parent hates in you somewhere. And like there are so many studies that actually prove that like it's so de detrimental to the um, self-confidence of these children who go through that. No, I hear you completely and I completely agree with you. But I've also, um, the issue of parental alienation, that is popping its head out like crazy. And, you know, although it's not a thing in our courts, our courts have recognized it, but it's it's not a robust principle, yeah. you know. And people who alienate their kids from the other parent because they are mad or they are sad because whoever and whoever, he or she cheated on me, whatever. But you still have kids. 
you know, and your kids don't deserve to be part of a divorce at all. Divorce is between you and your partner. It's not between the kids. Keep the kids away from it. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. So then on another note, there's a lot of people who are going through domestic violence during this festive time. And it's a very hard time to, to be a victim of domestic violence because, I mean, like you're all cluttered in one little house or wherever you are spending the festive season. It's not like you're going to work or this person is going to work the whole time. Like it's more common uh, for people to actually become victims of domestic violence. And I just thought it's interesting or not interesting, necessary for us to actually mention that you can still go and get a protection order in this time. The urgent court is still functioning um, mm -hmm. during this space of time, 24-7 hours a day. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100%. You know, it's, it's heartbreaking to see these people who come out of the, uh, abusive, let's just call it what it is, it's abusive, out of these abusive homes or relationships and you know, to try and build themselves up from that again. And, you know, I take my hat off to people who leave abusive relationships. It's hard. It's a very hard situation to be in because in some way or another, you, you become dependent on the person, you know, and it takes guts to walk away from that. And I think people need to hear that you are not a coward for walking away. Only a strong person asks for help. That's you know, true. yeah, and you know, if like um, you just said, the court, the urgent court is still open. It's not too late. You know, there's, uh, there's a lot of there's uh, always organizations as well, like uh, there's shelters that are still functioning during this time. If you really need to leave your house, like there are options. There are lots of options and you you probably won't believe this, but your family or your friends will take you in with loving arms from because they probably know that the relationship is abusive as well. You know, there is always at least one person that cares about you. You know, and, and I mean, like you said, people see, like we might think that we are putting up this mask and we are like every the world outside thinks that everything is perfect, but like mm -hmm. I'm sure there's at least one person who who can see that actually something is not right, something is going on. One yeah. hundred percent. Whether I mean, ugh, something I have started picking up on is that I am turning into my mom. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is uh, all her life lessons are now turning out to be right you know <laughs> and you kind of want to phone your mom and be like thank you mom you know I know um, yeah you reach that stage in your life yeah yeah and I mean I know if I had to w walk out of an abusive not that I'm in an abusive relationship but if I was in that situation Yes, it would be hard. I can believe that it's one of the hardest decisions to make in your life. But if you feel that you need to leave, leave. And only go it's back. Yeah, pack all your stuff, move out. Go and see your partner to talk the next day. Or don't even go. You don't even owe an abusive partner that. You know, and listen to your parents, whether or your guardian, whether it's your mom, your dad, your granny, your grandfather, your brother, your sister, they know. You know, you must you mustn't forget that your family, whether it be your friends or your blood relations, there is always someone that cares. And wow. you know, no one will look down on you for leaving. That I can promise you, that's something I've seen. You know, I was engaged with quite a bit of domestic violence um, proceedings in the beginning of the year. And, you know, just get out. 
just get out. It's going to break you because, I mean, all you know is that, especially these long-term abusive relationships, it's all you know. But I promise you go get a protection order, you will be okay. You will be okay. And especially with the new domestic violence um, act that's the new one, they are, this is robust. The police have to do something. The police have to do something. And, you know, if if it gets to that point, please leave. You yeah. know? And I also want to add, there are also a lot of people saying, listen, but the police do nothing. Or they say, no, sorry, you don't really have a case. We can't do anything for you. Sort it out yourself. Which is bullshit. If the police won't allow you to open a case, um, let's say somebody assaulted you or whatever, demand to speak to the station commander. Mm -hmm. Because it is a sad reality in South Africa that some police officers may not like know everything. They might not know the law. They might not know like all of the specifications, or they might just be lazy. Again, mm -hmm. like it is. Unfortunately, that's the reality we are facing in our beautiful country. But again, like you said, it's not all of them. So don't, like, I know a lot of people even say, like, we won't go to the police because we know they're not going to help us. How do you know? Like, if you don't go yourself, you won't You won't know. Mm. Uh, like you said, unfortunately, it is a sad reality of our country. But I have met a handful of quite amazing people um and you know there are people that you do not have to pay to do pay extra to do their job they genuinely do it because they became police men or women to protect people yes not just the okay. illegal benefit <laughs> yeah okay so is there anything else that you think we should also discuss in regards to like something that the general public might come into contact with over the holiday season? Or do you think we've got everything? Um, I think <laughs> one thing, it is quite a stupid one, but disclaimers at swimming pools and at the beach and at restaurants. Remember, those, those, those disclaimers are legal. However... An important thing you have to have to have to remember is that a company cannot contract out gross negligence. If there's negligence on the part of the pool owner or the restaurant owner or whatever, they can still be held liable. But please use common sense. It is the festive season. Don't go and walk on slippery decks. That's important. That's Come on. <laughs> Casey, yes. thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I think that our listeners have learned a lot from you. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you for having me so much, Danielle. It's such a pleasure to work with you.